Hey gang, welcome back to the shop. Uh, today I'm actually uh, catching up on some stuff that I put off for a long time. Um, and that is the storefront lock. Um, it's actually mine. So when I took over this place, um, I did rekey and gave the, the property owner a, a key, but um, the outside cylinder, the inside cylinder, and the storage cylinder are all different uh, keys. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put the, uh, the GMS MX-13 keyway in here and the bag, get everything lined up on one key. Um, and also have this set up so that I can demonstrate to people um, what the restricted keyway is. You know, everybody knows who, who's Googled a restricted keyway system always comes up with Medico or something like that. Um, but I'm going to go through and show basically setting one up. Um, what I'm not going to go over is all the, the paperwork and everything that uh, CLK supplies provide you uh, just then hey gang interrupting breaking news um while i was putting this video together um i, I really think i, I didn't do a, a a true service by skipping over the documentation that comes in the training um so i just wanted to add this in to do that um hopefully i'm not getting too modulated with the camera um Reinstalled, uh, well, did a Windows 11 upgrade and it didn't go so smooth, so that's on tomorrow's list to rebuild my computer. Um, I've got a virtual machine up on the screen here, I think. I don't know, I can't see. Um, so hopefully it comes across better. Um, videos of a 32 or 64 inch screen doesn't, doesn't work very well. Um, anyways, so... These are, are the documents that, that you can download as part of the training module that PJ get, gives. Um, and you get that, I think, for one year. Which, obviously, I mean, honestly, you can, in a week or two weeks, you can get through everything. But it's good to have that extra time to go back through. Um, and again, he's not doing the technical pinning the cylinders or anything like that. It's getting in the right mindset, getting your pricing set up and the sales pitch um so i don't know what order these come in the dates might help here um it's like the first one I downloaded was 330 of ooh, two years ago okay um but let me go through the order that that makes sense in my head um you do have to sign up for the program um you reach out to CLK Supplies, and I forget the address, I'll find it and try to put it or something. Um, sign up, basically they, they don't want um, you and the guy right next door to both be selling it, obviously. Um, so they do kind of a region-based, um, at least when, when I signed up for it, it was a new program. Put in my zip code, my address, submit the information. Once that went through, I was then added in the website so that I could search it um, and get the pricing. If you don't have that option in your login to CLK Supplies, then you don't see it. So let's go and let's get clarity. PJ does a really good setup on this, um, but this is kind of a, a homework for you to do. To know why you're selling it or if a customer says i want to uh, you know I'm, I'm tired of my employees or my board members or whatever going to walmart swiping their credit card at minute key and getting 20 copies um so it's good good to kind of go through this and get your script um why do you sell it uh, i i believe in security um i believe in having control of the keys for an organization um you know, 20 some years in IT, mostly in security, military before that, um, you want that access control. So I know with a restricted keyway system, they're, they're not gonna be able to go to home, big box store, 
or man i guess i already said walmart you guys get my drift can't just go to up the street and make as many copies as you can pay for um and some of these kind of bleed over so i'm, I'm trying to read and go through what i say why do i believe in it i think I, I covered that with the first one or maybe i'm covering all of them at once i don't know um why do i believe in it because you're, you're giving that that storefront owner that business owner that community center owner or board um control their security you know if if uh they have an employee that, that leaves or a board member that comes off or they have a problem with someone they know they're not going to be able to make that key um so that in conjunction with maybe security systems is a benefit um but it, it puts a control in who can have a key to that that facility um there's another document which we'll go over in a minute um what if you don't get the key back so what are the main benefits affordability and access control um just to give you an example so mx13 don't look at my my purchase orders <laughs> so let's duplicate this page So let's go to, let's look at a one inch. Where, uh, cylinders, of course, I'll, I'll get it eventually. Can we select size? One inch. Okay, so for example, here's a an Elko Mortis cylinder, 770. That's WR5. It's SC1, 770. So seven eight bucks. So if you're doing a lot of buildings, I mean it is. I guess I think in the video I said it's a couple bucks difference. Um, supply chain prices have kind of gone up and down but you know it's not a huge difference if, if you think about it um, so it's 13 bucks opposed to seven I mean you can get into more expensive ones maybe or cheaper ones um, but it, it's not a huge difference for that the keys are a little bit different in cost um, but that, that initial investment of changing the hardware. Um, yeah, there's a price difference in the cores and the locks, but you're not going to have to get, for the most part, you're not going to have to get new uh, door latches. Um, as you can see, LFIs, you got the large form factor, um, key and knob. Mortise, Mortise, there's rim. So these will fit existing door hardware for the most part. So there's a, that little bump up that's going to be slightly more or, you know, not out of the ballpark uh, price service and just getting the place rekeyed. Because um, you're going to be replaced, at least myself, I charge a, a service call. Um, and then a per core rekeying charge. Um, and then, of course, the keys on top of that. But the, the one thing is, say I, I did go through and I rekey 100 locks. As soon as you give one person that SC1, that Y1, whatever key, and they walk out, you no longer know how many keys are out there. With this, you know how many keys are out there because it's how many you purchased. Um, so, slight upfront cost. But then overall, over the years, not having to rekey as much or as often, um, the 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 long-term pricing significantly goes down. Um, 
main benefits again you control who is authorized to get a copy made which we go into authorized users so when you set up a, a new customer new client you're gonna have them fill this out or you can fill it out um, and get their signatures I, I do uh, get a copy of the photo ID driver's license whatever um, of each person who's authorized so that way Joe Schmuckatelli can't just come in and say yeah I'm Joe non Schmuckatelli you know whatever I'm, I'm John Doe um, and you can set up what they're allowed if they have you know master key system whatever um, you can set up in here um, or have on file and when they come and they get keys made you can note date number of keys cut the key code so is it the you know grandmaster is it a master is it a you know a, a sub key um, so that's authorized users and keep this on file keep it up to date because um, if not you, you're gonna have to call one of these people to authorize um, or say, hey, you know, I've got Jane Doe in here, and she's saying she's authorized. I don't have any record of it. So, again, it's more of that access control. So, I authorize users. Here's another one as far as um, setting up your cost of the program. Um, PJ goes into it really well. But, you know, the the... The cylinders and stuff are not where you're going to make your money on this. Um, it, it's going to be the keys. Uh, that tends to be backwards from a lot of places I deal with. Um, because they do SC1, they do whatever, and I may not always be available to make more keys for them. They go to Walmart and Bob's your uncle. Um, you kind of, you know, are going to set one and a half times, two and a half times your cost for the sell price. So it's good to get these kind of laid out so that you have your business model and you're not thinking on the fly. If you've got a POS system, um, once you set this, this spreadsheet up, you can then put it in your POS system. So then it's when you go to check someone out, you punch up, you know, uh, uh, one and a quarter uh, more T cylinder. 20 keys those are the prices so we did that, that key signature I guess I should have done this um, so this is one thing you can provide to the customer um, so that as they hand out the, the, the new MX13 keys to their employees or committee board um, whatever I Don Jenkins received one key I understand that the keys are owned by the property owner um, and if I don't turn in the key or I lose the key or you know however this is just kind of a, a uh, template for that that customer to use and they can say well, we want to change this to 500 or you know whatever this gives them a template so as they issue the key it's signed there's more your access control and checks and balances so we got get clarity, key signature pricing, we did the pricing worksheet. I'm going out of order here. Key blank checkout. Um, for every box of keys I get, I make one of these, or I start one of these, because sometimes it can spread into a second page. Um, I note the serial number somewhere on here. Um, and then as that customer says, I need 5, 10, 15 keys, do the date, the file number, going back to file number, number of keys I used, the balance left in that box, so I'm always keeping a tally, and I initial it, because I'm a party of one, I don't have multiple employees, but... This would be how you would keep track in a shop with multiple uh, locksmiths. You know, 
Don Jenkins DJ checked out uh, 10 keys there's a five keys left in the box file name file number date and that ends up uh, referring back to this however you keep track of I use a, a, a Google form and spreadsheet that I made uh, so we are at one two three four five how many more Four, five. Okay. So, another layer um, in this is that you can create your own uh, bidding cipher. Um, the pins, the spacing, the depths are all uh, SC1, SC4, Schleg standard. Uh, but you can go on top of that and create a cipher key just for your shop so if you want you know a standard SC1 or a SLEG uh, cut 3 you can now encode it to Q so that you have your own scheming so that if they can't somehow get a hold of these keys or whatever I, I don't know I, I, I generally don't use this because I'm the only person in the area that sells this um, and I'm not dealing with a, a high volume or high uh, service area to where I've got to make it super secret. But this is one of the options. Um, so in, in kind of a nutshell, interrupting this the video, um, that's, that's kind of the, the layout of the, the paperwork, setting it up, um, doing your checks and balances, and providing that authorization form. Uh, to the client so that they're covered in case someone mm -hmm. doesn't return a key um, but it also helps with your pricing um, yeah so I think that's it in a nutshell now let's get back to the video but when you sign up and buy into the program uh, I think it's I want to say three four hundred dollars to buy in um, but you're just buying the products you're buying the, the cylinders the the keys, what have you. Um, and PJ and CLK Supplies has a really good training series. It's more for the business side of it. Um, forms, because um, each, man, I, I probably should have wrote a script or something. Um, they recommend you keep your blanks in a safe, which I do. Uh, but each box of 50 uh, comes in a five pin and a six pin. Each box of 50 has a serial number. That serial number is stamped on each key. Where did I put my key? Oh. It's like I was getting ready to do it, and uh, I decided to shoot a video. So the serial number is on there. Um, I'm going with 5-pin for the store here uh, because I have more of those blanks. Um, all the cylinders can be 5-pin, 6-pin. Um... You do, you know, when, when you sell the, sell the system, um, around here I sell a lot of them to community organizations. I've got a video, I don't know if I put it up already or not, where I installed the system in one of the community uh, places around. Um, a lot of, like, come here to the window. That building way back there. That's our community center here in town. Uh, and they have a board and members get elected and go on and off the board annually. Um, so there's a lot of turnover with keys. Um, they had a problem where someone who went off the board lost their key, never turned it in, um, but was showing up at the community center in odd hours uh, using the internet and everything else. Um, so they reached out about a restricted keyway system, but they just didn't have the budget. And once I explained, you know, it's basically replacing the locks, which there's not a huge price difference between these or um, your standard ones. I'm trying to find. So I don't know if it's going to show up there, but the housings themselves, I don't know if you can see, SC. The only thing that's really different is the cylinder inside. Spacing pin size cutting the keys is all identical to a Schleg um, SC1 SC4 
Uh, and that's what I was going to demonstrate. And I keep getting distracted by people walking by. Um, squirrel! Um, so, but anyways, I didn't want to turn this into... Well, actually, I didn't even think about doing this video um, until I did. Um, so this is the latch out of my storefront. And for those of you not familiar with these type, um, it's kind of the Adams Wright. I think this is actually a Regent brand. Um, but just want to go over it real quick because there's a million and one videos on there out how to do these. Uh, but let's see. So you got your face plate. Take these out. These small screws will drop and fall everywhere. Uh, so, inside, it can be a thumb wheel. I don't put those on. I always put a key in. Um, once you get the face plate off... Man, I should have prepped for this. Um, you then have your two mounting screws here and down here. And then you got your set bolts here. And that's what keeps the, the locks from turning. And again, I'm not going to do a whole video on putting this in, setting it up. Uh, I want to go over more of the, the MX-13. Uh, you got your collars, uh, security collars, what have you. Um, but once you loosen these set screws, uh, I'm going tight. You can. Uh, I don't recommend it. But you can. Take just a blank key if it's being stubborn and twist. Don't use a cut key. Uh, you can twist it off. I bought one of these for like five bucks off UHS hardware. It just kind of clamps on and then you can... But once you get it going, depending on how gummy it is, they just unscrew. Recam, replace them, and then mount it back up. So, like I said, there's a million and one videos on out there on this. Um, but I just wanted to show actually setting one of these up. I believe this is this is where preparation would come in. So here's the key blank I'm going to be cut. I'm going to be using it's a, a three six eight two three. It's a five pin. If you line the shoulders up, I mean obviously the the grooves are different, but the length and dimensions are the same. So. Oh yeah, I have not pulled out. That's the crap cylinder. So there's your SC. And you open one of these. And you have your different cams on the back. You got your cylinder. And you've got this. Uh, these are, I think these are already pinned for six pins. Let me see. Okay, yep. So you got the springs and top pins already in there for six pins. Um, God bless. Rope. Oh, it's just bent. Oh, it's going in a little tough, but let me find. Oh, here's an MX. Yeah, it's got to be something wrong with this key. It's a little tight. It's not noise. Um, anyways, let me cut it. And I'll speed this up because of loud, but 
there's the keys we're going or the cuts we're going for. And I actually turned the power off. So got my frame of two here. Got a bunch of crap in the way. So straight from our frame and book. 1145, that's an SC1. Pretty sure that's the, the old code for an SC1. Um, cuts, spacings. I'm going to use block one, which is block one. I don't know how well these show up. Um, one thing I forget is I've got to use glasses when I use this. Um, so we're using the 156 spacing. 156 spacing. I don't know the best angle for doing this. I'll go up top. Maybe that'll. There we go. So I've already set this up for my spacing. There's videos out there. Uh, Freeman has a really great 1970-some uh, video on YouTube and then their site. Uh, first one starts at 231, 231 depth. We're going to go 290. Yeah, look at that. We're already on 290. So let me cut this real quick. So some of you may have saw that I moved this back and forth after I cut. Uh, I find on, on slight keyways I need to widen this just a little bit. So um, these spacing blocks are good at getting in even when you dial it in correctly. Uh, so I always check the spacing here, use the line here to get me in the ballpark, and then I set the, the exact one there. So come over here. Okay, now if I did things pretty much, hopefully, semi-correct. And hold them up correctly. Hopefully it comes through. You can see the cuts are pretty much the same. Uh, I've widened mine a little bit more, but... So we're going to pin up... i got to figure out camera angles. Um, I've already got my pins here. Let me get the right. So, identical pins just spaced out using my pinning mat, which is handy. Lesson that took me a while to learn. Grab the wrong pin. This one looks a tad big. Let's see. Yep, grabbed the wrong pin. I gotta fire my assistant that organizes this. So, there's the pins in the slug. What I'm gonna do is transfer them directly over.
So just dumped them out right here. Hopefully it's on camera. And hopefully I've got them back in the right order. So that I could put, I wonder if, no, I couldn't wonder too far. So this is what happens when you don't play in videos. Um, but hopefully that shows the same pins, same spacing, same everything um, between an Schlage Keyway and the MX-13. Um, Hopefully that kind of shows a little bit more. Um, I've already got my locks pinned up uh, because this video was an afterthought or mid thought or senior moment. I don't remember anymore. Um, but let me go ahead and let me go ahead and button this up. I want to do some cleaning on it, put the locks in, and uh, get it installed. And uh, I'll show you guys the finished result. Okay, so it took me a little bit longer to get the latch uh, back in. Uh, reason being, I'm working in the entranceway to the post office. Uh, and I've got keys here somewhere. So internally, I've got the SC1 still. So if I need privacy, I don't want to deal with people. Apparently it's all buttoned back up. As straight as it could be. I did have to file some of this out. Uh, it looked like someone used a reciprocating saw. So I did have a little bit of uh, taking this in and out to try to get the best um, collar and spacing on it. I'm sure someone told me I'm using it wrong. Um, but this door is crooked. So But anywho, that was kind of a quick overview of the Adams Wright storefront latch uh, and the MX-13. Uh, that guy, yeah, don't worry about that little guy. Um, hopefully, I kind of covered the similarities or the ease of using them. I mean, the the case itself. doesn't really show but the body itself whether it's a rim uh, mortise what have you is stamped SC for SC keyway um, the only thing that's different is the cylinder that goes inside with the keyway um, so if you guys have questions comments or if you use it yourself please let me know uh, throw everything down in the comments and uh, thanks for hanging out with me catch you guys next time